Welcome from Curia Hospitals. I am Dr. Manisha Pathak and I would like to welcome Dr. Archana Kavalgat, our uh, pediatrician and neonatologist uh, at Curia Hospitals. Welcome Dr. Archana. Good morning and uh, this is a good opportunity to get in touch with the masses. Yes. Uh, like nowadays we are uh, even on television and everywhere we are just coming across advertisement of uh, government for uh, MR vaccination that is measles and rubella vaccination. That's right. So why this MR is important like measles and rubella vaccination is important. Can you just highlight So that? I'll just give you a quick uh, uh, reason why measles and rubella are uh, the diseases that have been focused upon. Uh, measles and rubella are both viral illnesses which are transmitted uh, it's through an airborne route. Measles particularly is very harmful in the younger children because uh, it causes a lot of havoc to several organs. The children can develop pneumonias, they can have other organs affected, their immune system is affected whereby they can be susceptible to more diseases. Um, and in the later uh, times, very late, the, a neurological disease can also happen in children who have had measles. Considering rubella, although it's a milder infection, what's more important about rubella is that it can cause congenital rubella syndrome to the unborn child of a pregnant mother if she suffers from this disease uh, during her pregnancy. So hence, it is very important that we get rid of these diseases from the community just as we've done with polio for the last two years. Right. Uh, now again, this like one question uh, comes in everybody's mind that I have vaccinated my child as per WHO norm, like all injections I have given. So do I need to give this MR vaccination? Yeah, so uh, this is one of the most common questions. First thing, uh, this is not just the routine kind of thing. It is a mass vaccination being done at a single time to a huge group of people. Right. We are trying to bring on what we describe as herd immunity. Okay. The entire group of children in that age group from 9 months to 15 months will be receiving this vaccine at the same time. And it brings up the immunity of the entire group to a particular level. Let me remind everyone that even after taking all three vaccines, different people respond in different ways. So one child might have reached, let's assume, about 80% immunity. The other child might be way behind at 65 to 70%. So that makes him more susceptible and he or she being more susceptible, the community is more susceptible. And hence, due to the concept of herd immunity, we are giving this vaccine to the entire lot of children together. And this will not or may not happen very soon now. So it's a one-time Activity, okay. not like pulse polio, which is happening often. Uh, often, yeah. Right. Okay, so I think it is mainly for our uh, children's safety only. Absolutely. What, uh, the herd immunity and other concepts are there. Uh, but if, uh, like, my child is scheduled for MR vaccine, say in uh, 15 days' time or a month's time, then do I have to give this vaccine? Or should I go with the scheduled uh, one? See, uh, this is an extra vaccine and it is going to be over and above your schedule. However, okay. if you are scheduled for an MMR vaccine uh, during this uh, time frame of between 27th of uh, November to 27th of December when this yeah. uh, program, the drive is on, then we should hold on with those vaccines. Speak to your health provider and reschedule the vaccine at a okay. different time. Okay. And there are some vaccines <coughs> uh, which... Uh, may get affected due to um, the live virus that is being given with the MR vaccine is a live virus vaccine. So do speak to your health provider and adjust the dosage timings. But MMR vaccine if scheduled during this phase definitely can be uh, postponed for a month. Uh, what are the side effects? As you say it is live vaccine. So what are the side effects of this particular vaccine uh, which are likely to Okay. In the patient. Uh, first, let me remind everyone that you have taken this vaccine right. for your child for when they were 9 months old, 15 months old and even 5 years of age. So this is the same vaccine which is being given with your health provider. Uh, it is a live attenuated, a weakened vaccine, a weakened virus and the 
side effects are of local pain, discomfort, there may be some fever, um, uh, a little runny nose, etc. about four to five days afterwards. Very severe effects may happen in your very, very tiny population, which can happen with any vaccine, it can happen with any drug. So those are always some um, points that we do need to remember and let me tell you the corporation people, I have witnessed the way the vaccine is being given myself in some of the schools that I went to. They are taking a lot of care. Certain hospitals which are close by have been appointed in case of any difficulty. A child is sent for observation there and uh, so far no untoward incident has been uh, reported because the campaign has already started and it's well on its way. Okay. So, uh, as you say, like uh, it is safe to uh, take this particular vaccine in schools or at government sectors also. Yes, uh, because they are not just holding the kid and giving the vaccine. They have a three-phase um, uh, process. The child is identified, um, the vaccine is given. Uh, if the parents are present, especially for the smaller ones, the schools right. have made it, uh, made it compulsory for the parents to be there. Mm -hmm. The vaccine is given, the child is marked on the thumb that the vaccine has been given. Okay. Then the child is transferred to an observation room where the child is kept for about half an hour. When everything is fine, there are no side effects or no problems, the child is allowed to go home. So this is uh, a three-step process which makes it very uh, systematic. Uh, you can pick up the problems okay. Okay. and uh, just would like to add one thing that even uh, they have identified few hospitals as uh, emergency centers that's, right. so, that's what I was just saying yeah. so even curing hospital is identified as uh, to cater patients for emergency care after in, the case, of any adverse effect. in case of any adverse effect so I think they are uh, handing over the kids to a safer hand correct, correct. Uh, next thing is like immediately after vaccination what care uh, one has to take or uh, what precautions uh, we need to take. Yes, so uh, what uh, the parents need to understand is that uh, if your child is having, uh, first thing is any chronic disease, is on steroids or some kind of a chronic illness, please again speak to your doctor, your health provider. Uh, whether it is okay to give uh, or a very sick child with very high fever, uh, they may not be appropriate candidates to take this vaccine. That's number one. Second thing, uh, that please send your child to school with a full stomach. And the last okay. thing is that don't take them out uh, and uh, eat in malls or in public places within 24 hours because if you have a vomiting related to that, it should not be uh, attributed to the vaccination and you will not be able to identify the problem. Uh, so that's one. Second thing, last thing is that if there is some discomfort, some pain um, that, that the child feels, maybe a fever, uh, paracetamol, which is um, the safest possible option to give, may be administered to the child. Okay. But that again, uh, as per uh, care of the regular dose of paracetamol, right. if not, please consult your doctor, take the correct uh, form of medication, drop, suspension, double strength, whatever, and administer it the correct dose, if so required. So I think with uh, this much of information, we all are geared up to go ahead with the government's, uh, like, uh, the thing for uh, measles and rubella vaccination. Yes. Which is I just want to make yeah. one point, Dr. Manisha. Yes. I feel that uh, it is our duty as citizens to cooperate because right. uh, this vaccine may seem to you is something that you have been given to your children, but a huge population of children have not been receiving the MMR vaccine. Uh, this will help bring herd immunity and because of our cooperation for the polio drive, Today, India has been declared polio free for the last uh, two years and if we achieve the same for these two diseases, it will be a huge service to your children, their children for the future. So I would really sincerely urge all parents to go ahead, put their doubts away. Uh, if you have any doubts, I hope we have managed to uh, clarify a few of those doubts and please go ahead and take this vaccine. Thank you, Dr. Arjuna. Thanks a lot. Thank you.
Thank and you for so having let's just uh, go ahead with the government's drive of uh, MR vaccination between 27 November to 27 December. That's right. Yeah. Thanks a lot.